what has you excited? One thing I noticed in your report is you actually didn't mention the having. Um, and I was wondering if we maybe get your views on that. I mean, do you see the having as a price driver? Are you one of those, like, is it correlation, causation on the price? Um, if we look back on prior halvings, we do see that the price seems to rally a few months after it. Um, I was wondering, I don't know if I know your your opinion on if the having is 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 related to the price or if it is a driver to the price. Yeah, I've long thought it was a bit overblown as a as a driving factor, but actually because I'm always like, but we all know it's 21 million is the total supply. You know, it's just a matter of yeah. how fast we get there. But I actually I've somewhat changed my mind. I, I do think that the new people that get involved, their time horizon is generally a lot shorter. Um and so they're just looking at, you know, I want to buy some Bitcoin. And then, yeah, if, if the supply gets cut in half uh, every day for the next, you know, the little, the unforeseeable future, um, that does make a difference. Like you're, the supply is being constrained and uh, the demand stays the same or even goes up. So that must have an effect on price. So, yeah, I mean, it's a bullish factor. It's It's, you know, in the long run, whether you know if satoshi had made a very smooth supply curve you know then we wouldn't have these big events um the price might have looked a bit different uh, i think ultimately it all produces the same results but yeah you know it, it's a, a shock it is a shock to the system so it makes me bullish sure mm. yeah you talk about the demand side in your report, you mentioned, you know, if there was a market crash, whether Bitcoin would be like kind of dragged down along with it. And actually, I brought up that Wall Street Journal where it's like Americans don't feel good. One of their uh, reasons was that they feel like everything's unstable, that they're going to get rug pulled any second. Um, and you look at the risk, you look at commercial real estate, that's kind of in the headlines a lot. You have some regional banks continue to come under pressure recently. Um, if there is a market crash, do you think that there would be a correlation to one event again and Bitcoin would get dragged down with it? Um, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think Bitcoin is, of course, very, very liquid, extremely liquid. You could sell it on a Sunday, just it doesn't matter. Um, uh, you always find a buyer for it. And so people that have levered up, that have all kinds of assets, they have Bitcoin too, they levered up a lot, all of a sudden they get a margin call. Well, then it's tempting to sell your Bitcoin. Um, so if, if there is a crash, I do think Bitcoin would get dragged down a bit. Uh, but that being said, I think a lot of the leverage has been flushed out of the Bitcoin system uh, since 2021, 22, obviously, with, with all these uh, collapses. There is probably a bunch of leverage still in the crypto ecosystem, but that seems to be a bit insulated from what Bitcoiners do. Um, but who knows? But so, yeah, like a liquidity event, you know, yes, Bitcoin would get dragged down, but I think it would bop up quickly and i think in the report the comparison i make is with gold in the 2008 crisis where smart investors knew that like yeah we're having a crash but they're gonna they're gonna print so much money to save the banks that um we're gonna you know it's it's good to be in a place in in an asset that is actually scarce um and now the 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 theme is just so obvious you know every time there's even a little hiccup in the economy we just see a wave of money printing and so yeah. if there is a crash, like immediately people are going to know, like, all right, they're going to just and now as well, like the Powell is is wanting to leave his legacy. It seems like as being the hawkish um, chairman, but with the new president, you know, as much as uh, if it is going to be Trump, I know he loves um, stock market records and all that. Um, so for sure, we're going to have a dovish plus. I mean, it's just completely unsustainable to leave the interest rates this high. Um, because the the government spending on the interest rates are just uh, on the interest payments is 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 completely unsustainable. So anyway, yeah, it would just lead to more money printing, which is good for Bitcoin. So uh, a yeah, short term the, crash followed by a, a an aggressive recovery is what I would expect. Yeah, maybe not to the extent of the twenty twenty liquidity event, but I think you just see like the knee jerk reaction is always there. You saw it in the banking crisis as well you know, new acronyms, but the overarching theme is that they come in and intervene. Uh, when, when everything goes bad, they always feel like they need to intervene and not let things fail. 
And of course, that leads to more money printing, uh, aka currency debasement. And that interest expense just exceeded a trillion dollars. Uh, so when you say it's unsustainable, uh, you know, that's the one thing Jerome Powell and Bitcoiners probably agree upon, right? Um, more than the military budget, right? It's just, uh, it's boggling, uh, mind boggling. Yeah, absolutely. Complete. I mean, we are like, we always expected that this would be like a hockey stick. But like now a hockey stick, you know, graph, but now clearly we're past the elbow of the hockey stick. Like it this is where it gets crazy. Like this is this is the, you know, if you want to call it the Weimar stage, you know, this is this is it. This is where you cannot put the genie back in the bottle at all. I think it's been interesting to watch China too, because China is kind of coming under pressure as well. And you're seeing the government intervene in the currency markets you're seeing them talk about doing a stimulus where they intervene in the stock market that's been crashing but i saw a couple of headlines where you know traditionally those are used as like a stores of value for for citizens in china real estate and the stock market they've both been crashing and so they've been turning to gold and they've been turning increasingly to bitcoin if you just measure like a peer-to-peer -peer transaction volumes and um, do you think, you know, you see central bank record gold buying. So do you think that more and more people are going to start to understand what's happening and turn to sound monies um, to try to protect themselves? I think, do you think that's maybe where a trend we're going to see over the next, you know, four years continue? And obviously, you know, Bitcoin and gold will probably be a big part of that. Yeah. The theater is on fire, and Bitcoin is the only exit that actually where the door actually opens. Um, yeah, yeah, I think there were a lot of phony exits. Like people thought, like oh, real estate, or like oh, bonds, or you know, I can I can maneuver around. And it's like no, no, especially yeah, like in p places like China and increasingly in Europe and the U.S., we're going to see capital controls and all kinds of you know restrictions on the movement of capital. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Bitcoin, and that's why I'm just so, you know, there's no fever like Bitcoin fever. We haven't even seen it. All the fevers supposedly in Bitcoin so far were not really anxiety fueled. Uh, it was mostly kind of greed fueled or FOMO fueled. Um, but but that anxiety of like, man, like there there aren't any other options. Um, yeah. Is is gonna is gonna it come? I mean, it doesn't mean that it's literally the only option. Like, yeah, I mean, gold is gonna do fine, and there there's, but yeah, I mean, imagine living in China today. Like, that's just it's very scary, right? I mean, you you invested your your money in like a say that you put down two hundred thousand dollars in in an Evergrande apartment, and turns out it was never built, and it's never gonna get built. So you <laughs> got, you got a piece of paper. That's it. And then yeah, the 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 Chinese economy is not doing well either because they're increasingly we're seeing mercantilism where countries are are isolating themselves more and more.